In this video, we will take a look at this concept of net stable funding ratio NSFR. This video will be helpful for candidates who are preparing for the FRM part 2 exam. Let's begin with a quick look at the motivation behind the NSFR. Please note that the NSFR was introduced as part of the Basel III reforms as one of two minimum standards for funding liquidity. The other one being the liquidity coverage ratio, LCR. Out of these two standards, these two ratios, which are respectively the NSFR and the LCR, it is the NSFR which focuses on what's called maturity transformation. We define maturity transformation to be the transformation of short-term liabilities to long-term assets. And this maturity transformation is a fundamental constituent of the role that banks play in the overall economy. Okay? On the plus side, it is maturity transformation which helps any given bank or depository institution to extract profits from this task of gathering short-term deposits or short-term liabilities and from these liabilities creating long-term assets which are nothing but the loans which banks extend to their customers. Okay? On the downside, however, Maturity transformation, it increases the vulnerability of any given bank or depository institution to this risk called rollover risk. The risk that the bank will find itself unable to roll over its short-term liabilities. Okay? The NSFR, therefore, what it tries to do is that it tries to ensure that banks they do not overindulge in maturity transformation. Okay, it tries to ensure that maturity transformation is not excessive. Okay, now let's do this. Let's take a look at how NSFR is defined. I mean the formula for NSFR. NSFR is defined as the ratio of available stable funding to required stable funding. The key word here is stable funding. And when I say stable, I'm referring to that funding which is stable over a time period of one year. Okay, the underlying time period or the underlying horizon when it comes to NSFR is one year. Okay. To be compliant with respect to NSFR, any given bank has to ensure that its NSFR is greater than this lower limit of 100%. Okay, now let's do this. Let's try and see how the numerator and the denominator of the NSFR is calculated. For calculating the numerator, which is the available stable funding, we have to calculate a weighted sum of the different categories of funding weighted by what's called the available stable funding factor for that particular category of funding. Okay, the available stable funding factor ASF is provided as part of the Basel III guidance. Okay, these ASFs, they are assigned by taking into account conservative assumptions regarding the runoff slash rollover risk of different categories of funding. And as a rule of thumb, please remember this, that the more stable, the more long-term any given source of funding is, higher will be its assigned ASF. Okay, this is as far as the numerator is concerned. Now let's move over to the denominator. The denominator is required stable funding. It's calculated as the weighted sum of different categories of on balance sheet assets and off balance sheet exposures weighted by 
what are called required stable funding factors RSFs okay as a rule of thumb remember this that the more illiquid any given asset is which means the more difficult it is to liquidate that particular asset in the event of let's say a funding runoff higher will be the associated required stable funding factor okay this is how your nsfr is calculated now let's do this let's very quickly apply this formula to a very simple example this is a very simple balance sheet let's say of a depository institution let's first focus on the right hand side on the liabilities and the equity of this institution to calculate our numerator which is available stable funding the first entry on the right hand side is stable retail deposits okay these deposits they generally tend to be quite stable they tend to be quite sticky and hence the asf for these stable retail deposits is rather high it's 95% therefore we need to multiply this guy by 0.95 next in our list we have wholesale certificates of deposit these are short term 3 months cds 3 months certificates in general wholesale funding tends to be quite fickle tends to be quite unstable and for this category our asf is zero okay it's short term and it's also unstable okay then the next element the next entry in our list is 10 year senior bonds these are bonds let's say with residual maturity which is greater than 1 year the asf for this source of funding is 100% so 200 times 1 and lastly we have common equity which is very very stable and the asf for common equity is again 100% so this 100 times 1 the weighted sum of all these entries please check comes out to be 775 this is my numerator okay now coming on to the left hand side of this balance sheet and focusing on the assets of this institution let's now calculate the denominator which is my required stable funding The first entry in our list is cash. Nothing can be more liquid than cash. The RSF for cash is zero. Okay, so hundred times zero. Next entry is sovereign debt. This debt tends to be quite liquid. The RSF for this entry is five percent. So hundred times zero point zero five. Next entry is corporate debt, which is triple B rated. this debt tends to be illiquid relative to what we have here the rsf for this corporate debt is 50% so 100 times 0.5 and lastly we have long term loans which have been extended to various businesses these loans have let's say a maturity which is greater than 1 year and let's say these are risky loans with a risk weight of 50% for these loans the rsf is 85% so 700 times 0.85 the weighted sum of all my assets turns out to be please check this 650 the nsfr then is simply equal to 775 divided by 650 which gives me nsfr of 1.19 which is greater than my lower limit my threshold of 100% which means that this institution is compliant with respect to the nsfr requirement okay now if for this same institution let's say i were to have my wholesale cds amounting to not 200 but 500 and my stable retail deposits amounting to 200 if you were to now recalculate your nsfr you can check this that your nsfr comes to 0.75 okay and this institution then becomes non compliant with respect to the nsfr requirement now what has changed in switching over these values essentially what has changed is that if your funding mix is primarily reliant on this short term rather 
unstable source of funding, you have a high exposure to rollover slash runoff risk. Right? For this situation then, your funding cannot be said to be stable or resilient. For this situation, there is a big mismatch between the average maturity of your liabilities and the average maturity of your assets. And therefore, for this situation, there is an excessive maturity transformation that is going on. And hence, this kind of an institution comes out to be non-compliant with respect to the NSFR requirement. And this is how we can convince ourselves how the NSFR helps prevent excessive maturity transformation. Okay? Now, before I stop, let me do this. Let me very quickly compare NSFR with the other standard, which is introduced as part of the Basel III, which is my LCR, the liquidity coverage ratio. How do the NSFR and the LCR compare with each other? Quickly recall that LCR is defined to be the ratio of high quality liquid assets to the net outflows which my institution will experience, let's say, over a 30-day stressed period. I want to ensure I have enough high-quality liquid assets which can be liquidated to meet or entertain these net outflows during a stressful period, and therefore my LCR should be at all times greater than this lower limit of 100%. If I were to compare the NSFR with the LCR, the first difference which I can spot very easily is that there is a difference in the underlying time frame, the underlying period. The LCR is focusing on a 30-day period, while the NSFR, as I told you, focuses on a one-year period. Understand this, that both of these ratios, they are complementary to each other. And what NSFR does is that it extends the period for assessing and analyzing funding liquidity from 30 days, which the LCR focuses on, to a much longer period of one year. That's the first difference. Okay? The second difference is a conceptual difference. What LCR does is that it focuses on what portion of the assets which I am carrying are highly liquid, are high quality, what portion of my assets can be readily sold to entertain these outflows over a stressed period? The focus of the NSFR is not on assets that can be readily sold. Instead, the focus is on the funding mix of my institution and the focus is to try and check if my funding is stable or resilient enough or not. Okay? This video is all about understanding the NSFR, the motivation behind this ratio, the formula for the NSFR, how to calculate the NSFR, and how NSFR compares with LCR, the liquidity coverage ratio.